Hello, Squirrel Tribe. Welcome back. If you've been here before, if it's your first time over here, welcome. Let me just give you a heads up. It's going to be a little squirrely in here, not on purpose. It's just the way it works. Got a lot of stuff to talk about and it's kind of going to ping pong all over the place, but I promise you it's worth it. I would first like to start off with this post that I saw from Gunther Eagleman on X because I think a lot of people need to fully understand exactly what a MAGA supporter is because we hear the use of the word MAGA a lot uh, and a lot of people are using it in a derogatory way like if you are a MAGA supporter there's something wrong with you. Personally I don't understand how wanting to make America great again makes you a bad person but to each their own right that's you know if if you want to think that way that's cool but I'm going to explain to you right now exactly what it's all about maybe it'll help change your mind okay so according to this uh Gunther says to all the newcomers to MAGA and those wondering what we are actually about here are the 10 core principles that enshrine the MAGA movement because a lot of people again are very curious number one America first policy it's weird to me if people don't agree that America should come before any other country when it comes to literally everything that happens here with our money that our government does, everything, okay? Number two, secure borders and illegal immigration. Again, one of those things, I don't see why you would have an issue with wanting to secure borders and ensure that the people coming into the, the United States of America are doing so legally. Think about all the people who have come before us, everybody who made this country what it is, they, may, they came here legally. They had to pay. They had to get papers. They had to do all these different things. And the people who did everything legally are getting crapped on by the fact that the current sitting administration is letting everybody else come in illegally. It's literally saying, I just spit all over myself. That's fun. It's literally saying, yes, you followed the rules. You did things the right way. You paid a ton of money to get this done and spent a chunk of time trying to do things legally. And instead of, you know, giving you the props and the, the, kudos and accolade that you deserve for doing things correctly we're just going to crap all over you by letting everybody else come in and do none of the things you had to do in order to get here and then also we're going to give them money and housing and uh, a way to get from point a to point b and maybe a cell phone i know we didn't do it for the people who did things legally but we like to help out the people who do things illegally around here that is what this current administration is saying the Donald Trump administration is saying that's not how we're going to run this country because it is not right and it is not fair to people who are doing things the right way. Number three, economic growth and job creation. Again, how you could have a problem with economic growth and job creation way beyond me. Number four, safe communities. Personally, I would like to live in a safe community. I would like my neighbors to live in safe communities. I would like anybody that's out there to live in a safe community. Whether I like you or not, I don't want you to live in some psychotic hellhole where you don't know if you're going to be safe walking out your door. I want everybody to be able to live safely, right? Number five, energy independence. Instead of constantly relying on all these other countries in order for our country to run, I can understand wanting a little bit of independence from that, but that way if there's like little tiffs or whatever happens or, you know, heaven forbid the world shuts down again because somebody releases something to, you know, cause issues and wreak havoc on, on, the, on the globe, on the planet, it would be nice to be able to say, well, hey, we're good. We got this over here. We are self-sustainable. I see no issue with that. You have number six, reducing government overreach. Yes. There are so many government jobs. It's like, why do you have a job? Like, what are you doing? And then they want into your paychecks. They want into your bank accounts, your pocketbook, your whatever. They want to know what's going on in your home and your personal life. You're doing too much. Stay in your lane and let me live my life, right? Number seven, respect for life and religious freedom. Again, I see nothing wrong with respect for life and religious freedom. Number eight, Second Amendment rights. Unfortunately, the current administration and the possible future administration, if we were to go the Kamala Harris, uh, Tim Walls route, takes away your constitutional rights, which is a huge deal to me. They scream about democracy, but unfortunately for them, we are a republic. We are based off of a constitution, not off of their ability to overturn constitutional rights, overturn whatever they want by voting on some stuff. That's that's not okay to tell me that I don't have the right that was given to me at the conception of this country to defend myself. 
So mm, there's that. Then number nine, national sovereignty, obviously, and 10, fiscal responsibility. These are all amazing things that the MAGA movement stands for. These positions will bring back an America we are all proud of. Again, this is from Gunther Eagleman. And I agree completely. The path that our country is on, unfortunately, is one that a lot of people uh, are no longer going to be able to say, I'm so proud of the country I live in. You may be proud to be an American because of what it has afforded us, you know, over the years, but you can't look at your administration and claim pride at the same time because the administration is doing everything it can, the current one, to destroy patriotism. Now, Biden and Harris, th this is what Biden and Harris do. So this is from, I don't know how to say this na person's name, Kanoka the Great, I don't know. This is a post on X with Governor, um, New York Governor Kathy, I don't ever remember if it's Hochul or Hochul, uh, whatever, uh, claims illegal immigration won't hurt Vice President Kamala Harris in the election because fewer migrants are crossing now than under Trump, which is blatantly false. Literally, if you've been awake the past eight years, you know how false that is. We know exactly what it was like the four years under Trump and illegal immigration and all the billions of dollars that were spent on them which it wasn't, versus the last four years under Biden and Harris and how many illegal immigrants came through and the billions upon billions of dollars that were spent on them. Over 8 million people, and I think this number is being very, very nice, over 8 million people have illegally entered the U.S. under the Harris-Biden administration, shattering 100-year records in 2023. Well, you know what? Let's go back. Let's go 2017. They say 311,000 illegal immigrants crossed into the United States. 2018, 404,000. So we're still moving up, which is unfortunate. 2019, 860,000. 2020, which is when most people were trying to get in the country because they wanted out of wherever they were, you had 405,000. Then 2021. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris took over and they changed everything that Donald Trump had put in place. They stopped, build the wall. They did everything they could to undo everything Donald Trump had done because they didn't like him. Not because he had bad policies, not because he wasn't doing great things for the country, but because they didn't like him. They were petty patties. And this is what happened. 2021, 2 million illegal immigrants crossing the border. 2022, 2.8 million. And 2023, 3.2 million. And so far this year, who knows how many. Now, this is what they have counted. There are numerous, numerous others that haven't been counted. And these numbers also do not include the, um, I think it was 350,000 that were flown in by the Biden and Harris administration from Haiti and numerous other countries, flew them in to just, you know, be here, uh, still illegally they didn't have any green card or work visas or whatever so that was still very very weird in their first 100 days the harris biden um group um duo took 94 executive actions weakening border security pausing deportations ending remain in mexico and stopping the border okay borders are uh, kamala harris because that is her name Re uh, reversal of president trump's uh, immigration policies has created an unprecedented illegal immigration humanitarian and national security crisis on our southern border costing taxpayers over 150 billion dollars annually major u.s cities are now cutting budgets for essential services due to the financial strain and here's you know the lady trying to lie and say that it was worse under Trump when it wasn't but we've talked about it here on the channel months ago about how even in I think it was Denver they had to pull money away from their city resources to instead spend it on illegal immigrants and by had to I mean they chose to because they are a sanctuary city so they pulled money away from rec centers which meant they were in they didn't have places for kids to go after school or on the weekends to be safe and to keep them out of drugs or gangs or anything else they, they could have gone there but they closed the rec center down in certain hours to pull money from that they were closing down parks they were closing down other things and they were shortening hours of city workers so they could keep money in the coffer so they could turn around and then put it towards the illegal Im immigration issue even though it's what they asked for they wanted the illegal immigration issue there because again a sanctuary city but they were hurting their own citizens and denver's not the only place that did it numerous cities around the country have done this for the last couple of years since biden harris have been in office where they're pulling their money 
that taxpayers are having to pay to help keep their city clean, their city safe, you know, fix the roads, do this or that. And instead, that money is going to um, house illegal immigrants in the rec center because there's nowhere else to put them to feed them instead of feeding the homeless population in that city. And it's, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. We've seen what happened in New York City. We've seen Chicago. We've seen Philly. We've seen numerous other locations and what has gone on. And you have to think if, if the Biden-Harris administration and, and Kamala Harris herself was not willing to stop the influx of illegal immigrants while they were in office and Kamala Harris was given the task of keeping the border safe and for four years she didn't do a damn thing about it, what do you think the next four years is going to look like with illegal immigration, with people crossing into our border, with more and more money going out towards illegal immigrants? Because if it costs $150, $150 billion annually now, with the way costs of things are going up, imagine what it'll cost next year and then the next year. And all that money that's spent there is money that's being taken away from somewhere else, whether it's fixing roads, it is fixing railroads, it is you know keeping the, the parks open and clean and safe, it's whatever it is. It's money that's going where it doesn't need to go. It's it's unnecessary, unwarranted, unneeded spending, all because the administration is making it happen. So again, I have to wonder every single time I read things like this is how are they laundering it back to themselves? Because that's what it's got to all be about. Everything is about doing better for the people in power, not the people themselves. So that's just, you know, I wish I wanted to bring that to your attention because I think it's important to talk about. <laughs> and I showed a little snippet of this yesterday and people were asking where the video was. So here it is. You know, we've seen the one before of Donald Trump and Elon Musk doing their dance after they had the, um, what was it? The, the, the conversation they had on X a couple, like a week or two ago. And now that RFK Jr. has, uh, backed Donald Trump, put his name with him. They've made a new dance and I thought it was great. So for people asking about it, it is on X. It's from somebody named Fred Jellybeans, but I meme, therefore I am, is who reposted it on X. If you guys want to go check it out, it is over there. I just, I think it's funny. I think they're cute. Now, this is way off topic, as was that, but I think it's absolutely genius, and I can't believe this has never done, been done before. Look, this guy found a shopping cart, hooked up a bunch of dogs to it, and it's like, it's like the, uh, the Alaskan dogs who pull the sleds. I was like, mush, mush. I just think it's genius. It's genius. I don't think it's a great idea because that cart could easily flip over, but it's still genius. Anyway, there's no point in that. I just want to show it to you because I thought it was amusing. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. I want to read this next one to you because I am such a fan of irony. I don't know if you guys have realized it. And sarcasm, sarcastic irony is like the best thing ever. Mia Farrow, bless her, posted... I knew Robert Kennedy Sr. well enough to know that he would be devastated to know that his son would endorse a person who is the an an antithesis, an I don't know how you're supposed to say that, the, the opposite of every value he stood for. And the clap back from this woman that responded to her said, your judgment of men is so good that your husband married your adopted daughter. Savage. Just that savage right there. Mia Farrow, ma'am, you don't have room to talk. Just, it's, it's just funny. I thought it was interesting. Speaking of Hollywood and batshit crazy people in it, um, let's keep in mind that we don't know what's going to happen with RFK Jr. really in the long run because his wife, Cheryl Hines, she is a actress. She is big in Hollywood and Hollywood has their own agenda over everything. You saw how many people came out to put like tout how great Kamala Harris is. Nobody could give a reason. Not a single person could give a reason. I have to assume the reason is the paycheck that they got from it. Uh, you had, what's his name? Ben Stiller. You had um, Pink saying at the DNC and Common and all those people. You had Kenan Thompson. There's an, he's got a third part of his name and I can never think. Kenan, Kenan Thompson, Kenan. What's his third part of his name? I can never remember. But he came out and talked and what's her name from Scandal came out and talked. And then you have all these other celebrities who have made commercials and whatever else. Sean Astin, it broke my heart. Mr. Goonies, uh, when he decided to just be all about Kamala. I was like, bro, really? Really? Come on now. Like, stop. Like, everybody, I have to assume it's the money. Here's what's interesting to me. Hulk Hogan, who spoke at the RNC, and not only did he speak, he did his whole rip open the shirt or whatever. I will say he did make one comment that as soon as I heard him say it, I was like, oh, that's going to bite you in the butt, dude. That is not going to work out well. He made a comment about body slamming Kamala Harris. Now, he's a wrestler, so of course he's going to body slam anybody. 
but he's a dude saying he's gonna body slam a woman and that didn't go over very well on either side in all honesty and it really did bite him in the butt but not not really financially for him but maybe for his legacy because hulk hogan's biopic that has been in development since 2019 and was set to star marvel thor actor chris hemsworth has been canceled due to his appearance at the rnc 2024 in milwaukee joker the guy uh todd phillips who directed joker with um what's his name Phil phoenix no no what's his name I can't remember his name. He was in Gladiator. His brother died a long time ago. River Phoenix died. Joaquin Phoenix. There we go. She had to work it around. Uh, he was the one in Joker. But anyway, Todd Phillips said, this is due to Hogan mocking Harris, Harris's Indian heritage and saying he would body slam her if given the opportunity along with other controversial statements. Hulk Hogan has always been controversial. I don't think this has anything to do with it except for the fact that they are trying to stay in the good graces of the Democrats because him mocking Harris's Indian heritage. Do you know how many racist people are running around Hollywood right now? Do you know how many awful people are in Hollywood right now? Just Harvey Weinstein, anybody? Like, there's a lot of really awful people that have been part of Hollywood forever, and they stuck, stuck by them, stood by them, whatever. The guy who is in the whole, I think, I don't know if it's Disney or Nickelodeon thing on Netflix about how he was way off with the kids on the TV shows. What was his name? I don't remember his name. I can picture him. He's a very, very unattractive dude. So I'm, I'm guessing he was just awful to the kids. But anyway, Hollywood cares more about staying in the good graces so that they can continue doing the debauchery that they do and continue making the kind of films and TV shows and whatever else that are meant to just instill either propaganda or mind control or just mass... Um, hypnosis if you will they want to be able to stay in in power and be able to do this thing so of course they're going to kiss the ass of every democrat they can and so now they're going to pull this biopic on uh hulk hogan and i was like man that's 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 shysty in my opinion because it shows you how much influence democrats have and how much influence hollywood has together and it it's it's not a good look now this is kind of all the way off topic but it's something that we need to talk about just because it will be the next push for fear. And I want you guys to have like a heads up of it because um, it could be your state or my state next. There is a town in Massachusetts that uh, is preparing to lock down for the next few months because of deadly mosquitoes. Okay. Now I want to show you, this was a helicopter that was filmed releasing mosquitoes. This is according to Concerned Citizen on X. Anyone know any billionaires connected to GMOs? Well, bill gates had this whole mosquito thing that he was doing but here's a video let's see if it'll like really play it's hard to kind of tell but maybe it'll start over in a second they were dropping those are they're saying those are mosquitoes that they were dropping now for those of you who aren't aware um let's see bill gates uh funds a biotech company that received experimental approval to create millions of genetically modified mosquitoes in various u.s states allowing human immunizations through mosquito bites basically flying syringes they're calling it eee -E -E, and they're now saying it's in the u.s now this is all what's on here it's been talked about by a lot of people i do not have proof that this is what bill gates has done and i do not have proof that that's what is happening here in massachusetts that they are trying to basically spread this thing but at the end of the day cities in massachusetts several of them including oxford douglas sutton and webster they've implemented as of now, voluntary lockdowns or curfews due to the detection of EEE, -E, which is Eastern Equine Encephalitis, advising residents to avoid outdoor activities after 6 p.m. Do mosquitoes only come out after 6 o'clock? Like, they know when 6 o'clock hits, they're like, oh, it's time to go feast on the humans. It's 6 p.m. Dinner time. Is it somebody ringing a bell? Like, things like this is where I'm, I get a little, mm, this feels like another c19 and it's going to start off slow and then they're going to push it and the next thing you know we're all going to be stuck inside and they're going to say it's because of this but you can come out after this time but blah 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 none of it computes because none of it really adds up and makes any kind of sense but they're saying that this is because of the confirmation of one one human case of eee in worcester county the first since 2020 one i, I need y'all to really understand this one and one two three four Four towns in Massachusetts are having lockdowns and curfews because of one person who got a mosquito bite and came um, 
positive for eastern equine encephalitis. They say it's a rare and dangerous disease, can cause severe swelling in the brain. There's no treatment. Anyone can be affected. The death rate is as high as 30%. Now, we've heard their percentages before. Grain of salt on that one is all I'm going to say because it's very hard for me at this point in time to really trust the science or the people or anything else when it comes to stuff like this just because at the same time let's just go ahead and switch over here to real quick because speaking of things that are crazy former covid czar anthony fauci hospitalized with west nile virus okay that's interesting i'm just saying the timing of everything right now very interesting he is um he's had a lot of issues the person that was pushing the you know whatever's the most and has had every single one and every single booster humanly possible has also had covid so many times it's absolutely ridiculous i didn't do any of that shit i had covid once and we're done <laughs> one and done there you go i didn't do any of the crap because i have an immune system and shutting it down made absolutely no sense at all but that's just me you do you boo but no the science lied proven right numerous times and so now you have eee -E -E and you have fauci down with west nile the irony of it all is not lost on me. Now, we're going to switch gears over to Tiny Tim, as I like to call him, but not in like a loving way. Tiny Tim, because he's a very little man. He is a shitty little man. We're going to move over to him real fast. Um, because the lies, y'all, the lies just keep getting uncovered about Tim Walls. Again, this is from Gunther Eagleman on X. And thank goodness for people like him and others, Charlie Kirk and Benny Johnson and Insurrection Barbie and Laura Loomer, who have the means and abilities to get to this kind of information so that i can bring it to y'all and it can get moved out because this is huge because <laughs> this is it's huge because it just goes to show the pattern of lies that tim walls has like he, he's one of those what i don't even know how to explain what he is he makes me think of like the movie never been kissed which is totally you'll understand in a second where drew barrymore just lied 100 percent about who she was and what she was to make people like her so she could fit in and whatever else that is tim walls to me he was not the head coach of a winning high school football team he was an unpaid assistant coach because he had a felony dui he could not be a head coach yet he lets you believe he's a head coach he did not get nearly as far in the national guard as he said he did but he lets everybody believe it and he has said it numerous times his wife did not go through IVF. She went through IUI, yet he continues to say IVF. No clue why, although we talked about it. Pretty sure it's because it makes him look less like a impotent man. And um, it also helps push their whole abortion, whatever issue. So th this makes, th this doesn't surprise me. Back in 2006, he blatantly lied about receiving an award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce. And you're thinking to yourself, why would you lie about an award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce? Like, what is that even like what is it nothing about this guy is honest and i'd like to show you the receipt remember we have receipts over here on squirrel tribe here is the receipt from the state chamber nebraska chamber uh, dated november 1st 2006 to tim walls for u.s congress and it's got his p.o box in minnesota dear mr walls and I, i'm gonna have so much fun reading this for you it has come to my attention that as part of your campaign for U.S. Congress, you have posted your biography on your website that claims you received an award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce for your service to the business community. I have been the president of the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce since 2000 and a professional staff person of the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce for over 20 years. We researched this matter and can confirm that you have not been the recipient of any award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce. This next paragraph is my absolute favorite because, oh, I love when people get petty. Oh, I love it. I am not going to draw a conclusion about your intentions by including this line in your biography. What they meant was lie. However, we respectfully request that you remove any reference to our organization as it could be considered an endorsement of your candidacy. <laughs> Here we go. It should be pointed out however they did not need to add this part in the fact that they did i am here for it all day long it should be pointed out however that the u.s chamber of commerce has endorsed your opponent congressman gil gut checked for his support of small business issues sincerely barry l kennedy cae president barry did not have to put in that last line by the way we did endorse your opponent but you ain't get shit from us i was like oh barry i've never met you but virtual handshake sir virtual handshake pat on the back i love it i thought that was great but wait 
there's more because of course there's more. <sighs> Even more stolen valor? Tim Walz claimed on his congressional bio that he was part of the Harvard teaching program in China. Remember, he's been back and forth to China numerous, numerous times. It was instead an NGO run by former Harvard students that may have been funded by the dun -da 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 CCP. Is everything about Tim Wall's life a lie? And he, you know, go ahead and put that little Chinese star behind him because he loves China. Tim Walls falsely claimed he was part of a Harvard teaching program in China. Instead, he worked for a nonprofit called World Teach that was founded by former Harvard students and had no known affiliation with the university itself. How much of World Teach funding came from CCP? That's a very, very good question. Now, this is um, a little bit more here. Let's see. I'm going to read this a little bit too because I, I haven't read this yet, but I want you to hear it. In the same 2006 campaign biography he used to launch his congressional campaign, Walls cites a year-long stint teaching in China. It's another credential he has inflated over the years, telling voters that Harvard handpicked him to travel to Asia. Harvard University offered Walls an opportunity to gain a new perspective on global education by teaching in the People's Republic of China. This is what his biography claims. His congressional biography, published after Walls had won his seat, said the same thing. Indeed, a 2018 version indicated that Walls taught in China through a program at Harvard University. The program in question, though, is the World Teach Program, a nonprofit founded by Harvard undergraduates, including the Nobel Prize winning economist Michael Kremer in 1986. For a time, the program was funded by Harvard's uh, Phillips Brooks House Association, which the Harvard Crimson has characterized as a student-run community service group that disperses resources to an array of nonprofit organizations and facilities, no, and facilitates volunteerism for Harvard students. World Teach, which is currently dormant, does not appear to have ever been an official program of ha Harvard. Walls, who is casting himself as a homespun Midwesterner and mocks Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance for attending Yale Law School, now omits any mention of Harvard from his biography. Went through and wiped that shit out. Reached for a comment. A spokesperson for Harvard could not say whether World Teach ever had a formal affiliation with the school. That tells you a lot. Kremer, the World Teach founder and representatives for World Teach, did not respond to a request for comment. Y'all. Y'all. Mr. Walls is a liar, such a liar, and it's not surprising. I know you're not surprised. I know I'm not surprised. And last but not least, pun intended, pun intended, I'd like you to see this little video that I have right here, if I can get it to work. I just, I, hold on, I want you to see it from the beginning. Okay, watch. You see this? This is Tim Walls. This is Tim Walls reaching over to Kamala Harris. Um, sir? That's her ass. That is her ass. I don't know if people realize where that is. And it doesn't look like he has his hand on it because there is a shadow there. But that's way too familiar, sir. At no point in time, at no point in time, does that need to be there. And at first I tried to say it's because of the angle. He's standing up to higher than her, whatever else. It should be much easier at a, at a different angle for him to not have his hand near her entire ass. We've already seen how Doug Emhoff, uh, Kamala Harris's husband, likes to make out with Jill Biden, like whole mouth kisses. We've already seen how it feels like to me uh, Gwen Walls does not like her husband, Tim Walls. We have seen Tim Walls basically be angry, violent with his son on stage in front of the entire DNC and all the cameras. His daughter also doesn't seem to like him very much either. Um, and now we have all these other lies that he has told. And now we have him. Why is his hand on her ass? That's all I have to say. Is there a little bound chicken wow wow happening between Kamala Harris and Tim Walls? Because again, why is he leaning down into her butt like that? Sir, lift your hand. Pull your hand up. Way too familiar. Way too familiar. You know exactly what you're doing there because it's normal for him. That's what I think about that. That is a normal placement of his hand in that area and he didn't even think twice about it just like when he yanked his son on that stage that's a normal motion for him he didn't think twice about it didn't realize what he was doing when he did it because it's normal for him just like lying is normal for him the shit just rolls out his mouth and he doesn't even think about it he if he says it like he believes it maybe everybody else will believe it too and that's where we are right now
I have a lot more, but it's Sunday and I just wanted to bring you some little bits of stuff. Tomorrow we'll just jump right back into the deep end of this thing because there's a lot going on. But this was just a little smorgasbord of randomness that I wanted to talk about because everything interests me. So Squirrel Tribe, I love y'all. Thank you for letting me have this conversation with you. It is time to go cook for my family. I'm going to make some homemade mashed potatoes and some grass-fed, grass-finished like sirloin tips, like the little steak pieces, and some broccolini. Sounds very tasty and healthy. I'm really excited about it. So there's that. Okay, I love y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.